Hey guys, Drew here with Top Overland. Uh, wanted to bring you guys another installation video today on a Chevy 1500. Uh, this will fit model years 2014 to 2018, also known as the third generation of Chevy Silverado. It'll also fit a 2019 1500 LD, or it'll also fit a 2015 through 2019 Chevy 2500 and 3500 uh, double cab slash crew cab. Uh, this will also fit all of the GMC twins. Uh, and this came from a very reputable source, Wikipedia. Okay, now that we've gone over what vehicles this fits, I wanna talk about what is gonna come in your kit. Uh, today's video, we are only gonna be doing a Bravo installation for this specific vehicle, cause that's what the customer elected for. We will have an alpha option as well. Um, that will be something that will be covered on a separate video because um, it's very, very similar to our fourth generation Chevy 1500 fitments as well. So what you're gonna get with your 1500 kit is going to be two sides. So again, this is our Bravo side. So you'll have a, a driver and a passenger. However, they are ambidextrous. So uh, they can go on either side. They are not side specific. You'll get your front fairing. In this instance, we have a no cut front fairing, so there are no drop cuts or holes or any sort of fancy work here. This is just our standard no cut fairing for non light bar users. Um, if you ordered an option with a light bar, your fairing will look different. Then you're going to have six sets of feet. So you've got your bases and then your load bar clamps. Um, these are all identical. They will fit, again, both passenger and driver side of the vehicle ambidextrously, and we'll go over that fitment here in a minute. You're also going to have your spacer key as well for fine tuning the fitment of the sides to the profile of the vehicle. And then last but not least, you'll have your master hardware kit that includes rivets, foam tape, all of your necessary bolts and hardware, and then also some thread locking compound as well. Okay, uh, so I've gone ahead, I've moved everything off the table. We have our hardware kit, one base and one load bar clamp. <clears throat> Gonna go and show you how to get your hardware and your general assembly, because we have to mate these two to each other and then get them ready to mate to a load bar as well. In this hardware kit, I'm going to go ahead and just dump out the majority of this stuff. We're going to set the rivets to the side, the drill bit to the side, foam tape to the side. Keep your Viber tight. Keep your feet to load bar bag and also keep your feet to rack bag. The other two you can get to the side as well. Uh, we really only need a couple of components here. I'm gonna reposition the camera now so I can show you a little bit close up uh, of what we're gonna be doing next to get these assembled. Okay, so we've got a different view now. We have our bases, we have our load bar clamps. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and grab two bolts and two nuts out of our bag that says feet to rack. These are going to be M8 button heads and M8 nylocks. What we're gonna do here first, is we're gonna take these two pieces and mate them together. So how we do that is we throw one M8 bolt through the second hole on the foot. So we'll have one above, two below. We're gonna set every bolt in the second hole for all six feet. Then we're going to put those bolts through our slots in the base, the 1376 base that comes in your kit. Then we'll flip that over and we're just gonna go ahead and get our nylocks started. And because these are nylocks, you only get a couple of turns on them and then they will stop spinning. And then from there, we're going to dig into our feet to load bar and there's a little bit more hardware in here. So I'm just gonna dump that one out carefully. Going to grab a few bolts and a few washers and by few i mean three of each and again i'm just doing this for demonstration purpose you're going to have to do this six total times so you're going to need to coat all of these bolts but what i mean by coat is you're going to grab that vc3 provided thread locker you're going to pull this little retention collar off of the thread locker itself and then you're going to screw this cap back on don't squeeze this tube. This shit is gonna go everywhere. So just grab the end as gingerly as you can and that'll start to ooze as you can see already. 
It's also important to note, you're gonna wanna do this on a surface you don't care about because it's already dripping everywhere. Um, once you start to use it, it'll drain a little bit. But what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply a liberal coating on one bolt. And then we are going to ring around the rosy two bolts. And what this is doing here for us is it's getting a 360 degree coating on about the last four or five threads of these bolts. And then I'll go ahead and snag one more bolt here as well, just so I can have a nice even coating. But we're gonna head again, just ring around the rosy, get those last four or five bolts coated. Now at this point, once you have these bolts set up with the Vibratite, you do need to stop and let these guys cure for about 10 to 15 minutes. Right now, these are wet, so they're gonna be a little stringy, um, but you're gonna want to let this dry and it'll become very much like a, a rubber cement texture once it's done. Once these guys have cured after the, about that 10 to 15 minutes, we'll go ahead and apply our washers. All right, we have a slightly different view set up now. We have our 1376 base. We also have our load bar clamp as well. I poured out the hardware from our feet to rack bag. I've also poured out the hardware for our feet to load bars. And I've gone ahead and I've vibratized a few of the bolts because I needed a lot of them to cure. And I just wanted to have those ready for this full demonstration. Although I will go over, over everything in this little snippet. So our first step here is to grab our load bar clamp. We're going to take our M8 button heads and put them through the second hole from the top. So we'll have one above, two below. Once we have those in place, we're gonna go ahead and put them through the double slots that are in the actual 1376 base. Then hold those bolt heads, flip it over, grab a flat washer, put one flat washer over each bolt, and then grab your nylock. And we'll go ahead and get these started by hand until that nylock begins to engage. <clears throat> and then from here, go ahead and take a five mil Allen and a 13 mil open end or box end wrench. And then we are going to actually go ahead and tighten these guys here to about, I don't know, 80% or so. Um, we want them to still be able to slide up and down. However, we don't want them to be fully tight because it's gonna be a little bit cumbersome when you're actually pr performing the install on the vehicle itself. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this tightened down here. So those bolts are, are tight enough that this isn't really gonna to wobble too much, but it's still going to slide up and down. In that process, I knocked over my bolts. So set those back up here. But our next step, we're going to be using these button heads. Again, these are out of the feet to load bar bag. You need to vibratite these first. So this provided thread locking compound. Um, we need to use that. We need to apply it to every bolt that's in this bag. How we generally do that, obviously we take the lid off, do this on a surface you don't care about. As you can see, I've already made a mess doing those first four. And then from there, you're gonna apply a liberal amount to one bolt and then grab a second bolt. And we're just gonna do a little ring around the rosy here, basically ensuring that we get a 360 degree coating on both of these bolts on about the last four or five threads. We need to do this and then we need to allow them to dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm not gonna use those two since I just did it. Um, this stuff will be wet when you initially apply it, but then as it cures, it's going to become much more like a rubber cement style texture. So go ahead and put the lid back on the Vibratite there, get that out of the way. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and take our bolts that is cured. We're going to apply a lock washer and then a flat washer. And we're gonna end up using three of these per foot system. So set those all up here. One more lock washer, one more flat washer. And then we're gonna grab these black threaded inserts. You can see they've got a flat side here and then they have a side with a little protrusion. 
The protrusion is going to face inwards towards the foot, so that protrusion is going to be this direction. Once you have that set up, you'll go ahead and take your, your bolts that you've applied your Vibratite to, and we're just going to hand thread these. And we're going to do this loose because we're going to have to slide them onto our load bar here in a few minutes. And all we're looking to do here is more or less get the bolt started by about a turn. So it won't be quite flush here to the back of that protrusion. You'll have, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. That's going to allow you enough wiggle room to still get this and slide it on the load bar. So this is one complete assembly. We need to do this five more times. You need six setups that are identical to this one here. So again, that's your M8 bolts through the second hole, flat washer and a nylock on the back, tightened enough that this won't wiggle, but it will slide. And then your vibratited bolts here on the outside into your threaded insert. So go do this five more times, and then we will rejoin you to talk about the next steps. Okay, for this next step, you're going to have to remove the OEM drip rails. They are a molded aluminum with some plastic clips that hold it to these little rivets that exist here in the roof. Um, I've gone ahead and taken them off this vehicle. I'm going to plug in a video from a 2019 Chevy, which is black. Uh, it's the exact same process on that vehicle, uh, but just want, so you guys are like, holy crap, they painted the truck while it was there too. No, we didn't do that. But nonetheless, you have to remove that to get to here. So I'll go ahead and plug that in now, then I'll split this video. But for the next step, we're gonna need a few things. So we have a microfiber cloth, we have some glass cleaner, however you can use like a 50-50 alcohol water mix. Anything that would remove this dirt without damaging the paint that's underneath the drip rails. Then you'll need your foam tape that's out of the actual hardware kit that we give to you. And then just some general masking tape, um, whether that be painter's tape, which is what we're using, or just your normal arts and crafts masking tape is fine. And then the only thing that you'll need uh, in addition to that is a pair of scissors. They don't need to be anything fancy. Um, but uh, Dave, can I have some scissors? Um, so yeah, we're gonna need some scissors. Uh, but first, once we get that drip rail removed, you can see I've already got mine taped. You don't have to do that step first. Specifically what? Specifically said that scissors. you don't have to be fancy. Look at those scissors. Look yeah. at those scissors. Those are some fancy scissors, but they don't have to be fancy. So. Our drip rails are removed. We've already taped it because we've been prototyping on this vehicle. Um, if you're doing this, your order of operations is going to be remove drip rails, clean next. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply some of our window cleaner here. And then I'm gonna use that microfiber cloth to get this drip rail as clean as possible. And the reason that we want this clean is so we can apply that foam tape next which is why a 50-50 water alcohol mix would also be good, but really anything that removes that dirt and gives you a good adhesion is gonna be just fine. So that is clean enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this tape. We're gonna provide you about 10 feet, which is gonna be more than you need, but nonetheless, we want you to guys to be prepared. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this edge started. And I am notoriously bad at this, whether I'm on camera or not. It's actually pretty painful to watch. So, yep, see, really struggling. Okay, there we go. Just needed to zoom in. And then once we have that edge peeled back a little bit, we're gonna start at this last pop rivet that's on the roof. That's gonna be pretty much over the seam of your back door, uh, just a couple inches ahead of that. And we're gonna go ahead and butt that foam tape up to that location. I'm gonna then peel back some of my um, paper here. And we just want to push this straight down. We do not want to pull on this. It is a foam tape, it will stretch. If you get a little off the center of your drip rail, that's fine. You can pull back on it and really get it to where you need. And then you're gonna then quickly approach a, another rivet. Um, you can go over this, however, it doesn't really work well. These rivets are too big to kind of push the tape around it. So what we normally do is butt it right up to it, pull it back just a bit, and then we use our really fancy scissors 
to cut this. And you can see I'm about an eighth of an inch short. It does not need to be super precise. If you want to get more precise, you can. Just use like a razor knife or something in that instance. And then we're gonna continue that process. So again, we're gonna put it here on the other side of that rivet. Kind of peeling that paper backing off as we go. And again, we're just pushing down. We're not going to be pulling on this tape at all. And then once again, we are at another rivet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this side as well. Again, about an eighth of an inch short. And then this last section is noticeably shorter. Um, we are pretty much midway over the front door right now. Um, and this is all the further we're going to go. So take this down. and then cut your last section one more time. And that's as far as we're gonna go. So you've got one more rivet that's about two inches behind the windshield, and then your second rivet is, we'll call it maybe 10 inches behind the windshield. You don't need any foam tape in that area. All your foam tape is gonna be more or less focused on the flat part of the roof. And then from there, because mine's already masked, I'm good, but you guys would be masking off the roof at that point. What we generally do is we open the doors ever so slightly. That way we can wrap it around this upper pillar. Um, and it's super simple. We just get a strip here. We throw it down. We pull it back. And then we just kind of apply this. And we do it in little sections of maybe three or four feet. Um, you want to make sure you have full coverage from this top lip to the door edge. And you want to make sure you have about two to three layers. What we're gonna be doing next is putting the feet and the load bars on the roof itself. And then we're gonna be hanging the sides from it and they will probably make contact with uh, the roof line itself because we haven't adjusted anything yet. And all we're trying to do is just prevent any scratches or abrasion or anything like that in that process. So it doesn't have to be precise, it's coming off later, um, but we'll go ahead and repeat this entire process on the opposite side. And then from there, we'll go ahead and get those feet that we previously set up and put them up here. All right, so we've applied our foam tape. Now have three load bars sitting on the table. We have our six feet that we previously set up. What we wanna do is preload all these load bars. So I'm going to go ahead and point this in my direction here. And then we're going to be sliding the foot on we're more or less pushing on these bolts to allow space for that little plate. And then that plate is gonna slide right into the groove. Get it set down so you've got maybe six inches of bar sticking out. And then we're gonna go ahead, spin it around here. Grab another foot. And again, push on those bolts to allow some space for this to slide on, slide it on. At this point, you have one load bar assembly and I wanna point out a couple things. So. These feet are identical when you hold them side by side, but when they go from driver to passenger, they essentially flip. So you'll have the clamp on one side of the load bar and the clamp on another side of the load bar. All these bolts on the driver's side will face backwards. All the bolts on the passenger side will face forwards. Uh, this does a couple things. A, it makes us uh, makes it easier for us to, to manufacture these because we're only making one part, which means they're going to get to you faster ultimately. Additionally, it's also going to work to stabilize that bar a little bit better and provide more strength to the system overall. So when it sets up and you go, well, half of this is backwards, uh, potentially the other half is backwards or potentially all of it is right. So this is a proper setup. We're going to go ahead, move that bar out of the way, and we're going to do that Two more times, we're gonna have three of these set up total. Once you have three of these set up, we'll go ahead and move them up to the roof. So get that guy here, get this guy here. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and spin around. Actually, I'm gonna move my stool over here because I'm not quite that tall. And then I'm just gonna take this load bar up with me and I like to try to get it as close as possible. So I'm gonna more or less hook that foot in the channel, slide that load bar to main, but sometimes it will not come, that one's binding. So just set it down gently. 
These aren't gonna be scooting back and forth too much, so you really don't have to worry about them scratching your paint, but leave it here like this. We'll get those other two up, and then we'll talk about our next steps. So all three are set up. I've got them in their approximate location because uh, I've done this before and just have a ridiculous amount of experience. You're probably gonna miss the first time, but that's okay. Persistence is key. Uh, this rear load bar, we can go ahead and just push that foot so it touches this uh, rivet. That's kind of our locator there. We'll do it on the other side as well. And then these, we're just gonna leave uh, floating. From there, we're gonna use our load bar bag. These are gonna be one inch button head bolts uh, with lock washers. I'm gonna just set that here for a second. What we're gonna be doing next is hanging our sides. So those sides that we talked about, they can go either, bra um, sorry, either driver or passenger because they are Bravo. They're not side specific. We're gonna go ahead and grab one of those necks and we're going to loosely hang the sides on this side and then loosely hang it on the opposite side. That way we've got some balance. And then from there, we'll start talking about location and, and what we need to do from there to get this in the right spot. Okay, so we've got our Bravo side here. Uh, I wanna talk about quickly where the location is gonna fall uh, on the rack itself. So this rack has eight load bars total. Um, we're going to put the rear load bar that's above the seam of the back door in this last slot. So there's one smaller slot just in front of your seam pod knockout. And then there's a series of three holes here at the end. We're gonna avoid these for the time being, this last load bar amount here. And then when you hold that up, you'll kind of get yourself a, a little visual. The third slot is where we're gonna wanna put that next, um, or I, sh I should say the front load bar. And then we'll fill in the middle after that. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I set up a lock washer on our one inch bolt. And then I'm just going to get a few turns on this by hand so I can let that hang out and uh, not worry about inner fearing with our paint. And then I'm gonna come up here, and at this point, you'll probably have to either move your sides a little bit, or move your load bar, or some combination thereof. And then we'll just go ahead and once again, thread this. And right now, this side is resting on the paint. Again, that's why we put masking tape down. Um, you know, I set it down gently so we don't have to worry about anything. You don't, certainly don't want to drop it, but nonetheless, this is not our final fitment. But then from there, we'll go ahead and get our load bar connected here in the middle. You can kind of see where that's going to end up. And then we'll go do the opposite, or I'm sorry, we'll do the same on the opposite side. And then we'll talk about getting our tightening, our fitment, and then the other load bars. All right, uh, passenger side is hung. We're gonna go ahead and talk about positioning of the bar inside the slot itself. So on your rear bar at the back of the truck, we wanna make sure that the side of the Bravo is pushed all the way forward. Um, and then from that point, we're gonna use our 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, and we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Um, we just wanna get these snug right now. We're not worried about torque specs or anything. We'll provide that at the end of the video. Um, but we'll go ahead and get that one all the way down. And then I'm gonna skip the middle bar once again. I'm gonna come all the way up to the front load bar, at least the front one that we have installed. It's technically gonna be the third in our overall setup. And we're going to push that one the whole way forward. And once again, we're gonna use our 5 30 seconds and we're gonna go ahead and snug these bolts down. And throughout this entire process of load bars, whether they mount to a foot on the truck itself, or it's just a free floating load bar from passenger driver side, we want to make sure that they're square. So that rear bar is at the back of the slot. On the driver side, it needs to be at the back of the slot on the passenger side. This third bar, or our front mount foot, I should say, is at the front of the slot. We need to make sure that the opposite side is also at the front of the foot. This is what is going to ensure that the entire system is square. So now that I've got two in place, I'm gonna go ahead and focus our attention here on this middle bar. And again, this one can really kind of go anywhere. You can go all the way back or all the way forward, but you need to pick one. I'm gonna go all the way forward because we've got a little bit more operating space to do so. I'm gonna pick up on the rack ever so slightly and get this bolt started. Go ahead and get that other one started as well. And then I'm just gonna move the 
bar in the rack itself. And you're gonna probably have to hold it in place here a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and tighten these down. Again, I chose to put this middle mounting bar at the front of the slot. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. First three load bars are in, they're tight. We've made sure that they're square from side to side, meaning that if it's at the back of the slot here, it's at the back of the slot on the opposite side or front of slot, front of slot. Uh, we're now gonna talk about filling in the remaining five load bars. This is gonna be a little bit longer take than you guys have seen so far, because I'm gonna talk about more or less three different load bars out of the remaining five. So we'll go ahead and start at the back because that's where I'm standing. We have this series of three holes here. This is going to allow us to mount this load bar either flat, horizontal, or vertical. Um, if you are mounting it vertical, you're going to see increased strength from that load bar. Uh, it's going to give you, I guess, a little bit more protection to the back of the cab if you were gonna load you know, something like lumber or a big canoe or something along those lines. However, it's not necessary to do it. We just give you guys that option. In this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and just install this one horizontal so it matches the rest. And all we're doing here is just feeding our bolts through the two holes that are already pre-machined at the set distance of the tapped load bars. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosely put these in and just, just get maybe a turn or two with a wrench to ensure they are threaded because I gotta go and set these up on the other side. This is something you can do by yourself, um, but you just wanna put everything together loose. Moving forward on the vehicle, we get to, I guess our, what, six load bar from the front, third from the back. Um, and we're gonna go ahead, and in this instance, you're only getting a slot, so that one's pretty cut and dry. We're gonna go ahead and start our bolts on this one as well. Just getting a few turns and very much like the other load bars we've already talked about, you want to make sure that this one is front or back. I'm going to go ahead and push it all the way to the back because that's where I prefer it from a visual perspective. That makes my OCD happy. You'll repeat that process for your load bar between your first and second mount feet. I'm just going to skip over that one for now. You'll also repeat that process for your true second load bar. I'm going to have Micah swing around the other side of me here quick and we'll talk about the very front load bar. So at the very, very front, um, we have this upper slot and then we have four holes. Again, we can run the load bar horizontal, meaning the two inch face is upwards towards the sky, or we can run it vertical, meaning the one inch face is up towards the sky. The reason we do it on the front end is more or less to handle um, bigger light bars. So whether you run an LP setup, uh, Onyx 40 dual, um, those are going to be some heavier setups and running the bar in a vertical configuration like so is going to provide you a little bit more stability and rigidity uh, as you guys are mobbing these things down the trail. Um, we're installing a no cut on this truck so once again I'm just going to go ahead and go with a horizontal and again I'm just going to feed that across and get I put a bolt in my mouth so I couldn't talk and then I'm going to go ahead and get these threaded in as well so just get that guy going here and you probably don't need to watch me do this for a sixth time but you know here we are this is what we're doing but once you get all of your bolts started on this side I'm going to go back and do those two other load bars I skipped over just a moment ago I'll go ahead and repeat that process on the opposite side and then we'll just talk about quickly uh, your checks that you need to make to make sure it's all square at this point, we have all of our load bars installed and everything is snug. So everything is even side to side. If it's at the back of the slot on the driver, it needs to be back of the slot on the passenger for every single load bar fitment. We've put our first load bar in the front of the slot because that's gonna provide you guys the quietest configuration, assuming that your light bar allows for that space. It's really, until you have this thing loaded up with gear, you really wanna have this first load bar as far forward as you can, um, given whatever circumstance you have with your vehicle. We've also gone ahead and installed the front fairing as well. You're gonna be using the four button head bolts and four nylocks out of the hardware bag that says fairing. And you'll be bolting the flanges that are on the front of the fairing into the two holes that correspond on the side of your Bravo or Alpha rack. 
Um, from here, we're gonna go ahead and get everything set up to drill the roof of this vehicle next. The base is installed with rivets. We provide you everything that you need. So we're gonna hop over to the table here in just a second, talk about what we need to get set up, and then we'll talk about how we are actually going to get everything aligned and what we're gonna do to drill and rivet this to the roof. All right, so on the table, I've got an array of tools and hardware out of our bag as well. So I've got our cordless drill. I have a three 30 seconds Allen wrench. I have our bag of rivets. I have a small rubber mallet, and then I have our actual rivet gun with an eighth inch collar. Um, this guy has a fancy swivel head. Um, Whatever rivet gun you guys are using, it could be something from Home Depot or Lowe's or Amazon, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure it has an eighth inch collet on it. Um, we like the swivel because as we're doing different vehicles, this just gives us a little more versatility. The last thing you're gonna need is your drill bit and the stop collar that comes in that bag. You'll be using your three 30 seconds Allen wrench to set that stop collar on your 3 16 drill bit. So what we've done is I've gone ahead and put that collar about an inch, inch and an eighth down. I've done a few test holes on the other side. So I know that that is enough uh, drill bit, I guess, to get through the roof without more having to worry about any sort of damage outside of that. So set that stop collar one inch from the bottom of the collar to the actual tip of the drill bit and then you'll take your 330 seconds allen and we'll go ahead and tighten this down and it's probably good for you to test this or tighten this i should say after every few holes these can loosen a little bit and you obviously don't want this to slip and go further into the vehicle than it is necessary um, so I've gone ahead, I've tightened that, and then from there, we're just gonna chuck it up to the drill, and we'll go ahead up to the vehicle now and talk about how to mount the feet, or position the feet, I should say, and then we'll talk about the riveting process as well. Um, so we're nearing the end of this install. We have a couple of important steps that we don't want to uh, miss because this is what's connecting the rack to the truck now. Um, but we need to talk about the position. So we have those pre-assembled feet, they're on the load bar. We've gone through all of that. I'm not gonna bore you with that. But this base foot, we need to butt up against this rivet here to space it back. And then we need to butt it up to the outside edge to allow clearance in this bend. Once you have that in position on both sides and you've made sure that it's square on both sides, then and only then you can start your drilling. So I'm good to go. I've actually already riveted that side just again to verify our depth of the drill bit and everything else. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this process is like. So what we're gonna be doing here is drilling through the foot and then drilling through the foam tape that we've applied, and then ultimately it's gonna be going through the roof. You've got plenty of clearance to get down between those load bars. And before I start turning this thing on and making all this noise, if you are not seeing metal chips, you are not drilling. Drill bits are designed to cut metal. Um, if it's squealing or squeaking, You've probably polished off the drill bit that we provided you and you're gonna to need to go buy a new 3 16 drill bit. Slow and steady wins the race. It is literally gonna be chewing the metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the right speed going. Uh, it's kind of a feel thing. You can hear it as well, but make sure that it is chipping because then you know it's cutting. So we've got both holes in. From there, we're gonna go ahead, dig out two of those provided rivets. And, oh, I've got one fallen. So we're gonna go ahead, load that into our rivet gun. Then we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're going to, whoops, don't drop it like I did. We're going to guide it here into our hole. And this back one is just a little bit tight, but it's not too bad. And then from there, that's when we'll use our little rubber mallet. If it doesn't drop right in, that's okay. Just give it a few tamps. And once the tone changes for the drill, you know you're seated. Or th this is a hammer, not a drill. But some of you might use your drill as a hammer. Um, so from there, 
we'll go ahead, we know that's seated. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this one pull and that rivet should not pop on that first pull. If it does, you probably did not have it seated the whole way. I'm then gonna go ahead and load my second rivet, hop over to my other hole, tamp that guy down. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and give both pulls and probably snap here towards the end of the second pull. Yep, so that one's good. What I'm doing there by going back and forth is allowing me to get both sides started so we can ensure that that foot is fully seated. And then you just gotta work your magic here, getting this thing out. Had a lot of issues with this today. Yep, there, yep, there we go. Get that out of the way. And then we'll go back to that first rivet that we just had the first pull on and we'll go ahead and get our final. That one popped as well. Get that out. From there, this foot is now fully attached to the truck. Go and repeat that same process another five times. Um, again, you're not gonna, well, let me, let me stop there, not again. Um, your other feet are not going to butt up to this rivet. That's only gonna be on the, the last two feet. So generally, we do the last two feet first and then we fill everything else in because we know it's square. On your middle and front feet, all you wanna do is just make sure that the outside edge of the foot itself is pulled all the way to the outside edge of that drip rail. Then you're good to drill it and rivet it. So at this point, all of our rivets are in the roof. It's six per side, two per feet, uh, 12 total. Um, at, what we're going to do next is work on our side to side adjustment and also our vertical adjustment. And then from there, we are actually complete with this install. Uh, so we're gonna hop up here to the roof. I'm gonna pull a stool over for Mr. Cameraman Micah. And then, you know, just kind of surveying everything, I can tell you that the rack is further to the passenger side than it is to the driver. So what we really need to do first is get the rack roughly in place because once you lock in one or the other, you're gonna cause yourself a, a mild bind. It's not gonna be impossible to adjust it, but if we're really close before we tighten anything, then we're gonna be perfect once it's all tightened. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a tape measure, and then we're going to measure from the outside edge of this foot to the inside edge of this groove tech, and you have to do this per bar. You really don't have to do the first bar and the last bar. The middle bar will kind of sort itself out, but we want to make sure that whatever this measurement is, we'll call it three inches, is going to be three inches on the opposite side. And I just spit that number out. I don't know that that's what it's going to end up being, but we want to make sure that we have both spacing exactly even or at least within a sixteenth of an inch of one another. From there, we can go ahead and get these tight and then we can talk about our spacing from the actual roof line of the vehicle itself. At this point, we've tightened our load bar clamps to the load bar on the rearmost load bar and the frontmost load bar. And when I mean that, I mean in terms of the actual mounting feet themselves. Everything is still fully loose on that middle load bar. We'll do that at the end once everything is all said and done. At this point, we're gonna use this little key and we've got this kind of long nose here and then the little rocket ship looking thing on this end. And all we're gonna do is just wiggle this until we can get that in and it just kind of bonk it down, let it nest in place. Then we're gonna go back with our five millimeter Allen and our 13 millimeter ratchet and we're gonna tighten these. But of course I forgot those tools, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a five millimeter Allen, switched to an L key because it's a little lower profile. And then I've got my ratchet. Then I'm just gonna reach in here Get that in place and then, excuse me, cameraman. Okay, last one's a little tight just because of the orientation of that last load bar, but why we tighten these most of the way on the table so you guys didn't have to fuss with this too much up here on the truck. So those two are tight, they're good. I'll pull my little key out. And again, we still have the tape in place for this. Um, that's a good idea just to make sure we protect everything. And you can see this front, it's sitting all the way down. So I'm just gonna grab the front of the rack, pull up, go ahead and 
rest that in place, get that little notch, bonk it down, let, let it seat itself. And then from there, I'll go ahead and orient myself and tighten down some more bolts. I think I have my, my, my ratchets in the wrong direction, guys. Okay, now we're good. Tighten down some bolts. That one's good. All right, so this side is good. I'm gonna go ahead, pull my key out. Er, er. See, we make racks that fit so good you can't even get the key out. Pull your key out, go to the other side, do that front and rear load bar once again, and then basically all we gotta do is just go back and tighten this middle clamp and then the feet itself. At this point, bases are riveted the load bar clamps are tight to the load bars the load bar clamps are tight to the actual base foot itself the only thing we have left to do is silicone the top side of this rivet here quickly just for some added weatherproofing what we generally do here is just a tiny little maybe pea-sized dollop on top and then we're going to get in there excuse me mr cameraman with our finger and just kind of smear it on that top edge, get ourselves a nice even coating. And all we're really trying to do is just cover the hole on the top side of that rivet. Once we've applied the silicone to the remaining 11 rivets, you can go ahead and pull your masking tape, allow that silicone to cure for the recommended time on your bottle. Um, and then from there, you're ready to boogie down the trail. <laughs>